ends off. All these little breaks and pieces, I'm going to carve them off. Every piece that gets put in that basket runs by this knife. By taking all those picks off, I know when I bend it, I can bend this piece and there'll be no breakouts. There'll be no split outs on either side of this riser. So when I go to rise it, I know I'm going to get a really nice corner. It's not going to break and it's not going to crack and it's not going to split. They're going to have a little space between them anyway, but taking a little more off makes all the difference in the world. Just that much. And just taking off a tiny bit will make your life so much easier. You're not going to fight. You're not going to fight for any room all the way up. There'll be no battle between one riser or the other because you'll have just enough room. The crown of the piece will scrape down to a sheer finish. Just by scraping it off, we've lightened it up that much. Now, I didn't have to. If I wanted to keep a bigger basket, I would have left more material on the other side of it. So I'm starting with a clean edge. Now, because I came this way, I gotta cut this way on this one. So I know this edge is good. So now, I'm just gonna go a little bit to a time. And if I cut it right, if I go on the right way, it'll get thinner here before it does here. See how it's getting thinner here? So then I gotta come back catch it here. The weavers don't have to be perfect. None of the weavers on my basket are perfect. It's not something you look at when you, when you see a basket unless it's... See what I'm saying? That's what you should be looking at for a weaver. Yeah. Now, start how wide? Yeah. Um, it depends on how wide your rises are. Everything is proportional. You can't have thin risers, the wide weavers. The weavers should be about a third less than the riser. I'm okay. gonna make a weaver. I've picked out a piece of ash that I've pounded off the tree that's not as heavy as my risers. You can tell that it's a lot more, a lot less body than my risers. And for the baskets that we're making today, my weavers are probably gonna wind up to be about that wide. So what I'm gonna do is cut them just a little wider so by the time I get done scraping them I can bring it down just a little bit. And this is the only time that I use a pair of scissors on my ash. I always start by laying four out. So, I got a narrower one on either side of that wide. Now I'm going to run four the other way. Start with four and four, and then you have a. Do you have Not four and four, and that creates your base. And you could go three and three. I just stopped. You can lift these up. Bring that in. Um, okay. 
I'll get a few more on, then I go around with the tape measure, and I'll measure to see uh, which where where I have to add one on. Okay, I thought maybe you just could do it by eye now. I wish I was. I wish I could. I mean, I can't. I have a hard time coming, you know, within a sixteenth of an inch. <laughs> Sixteen in a piece. I've only got fourteen, fifteen. I got a few more. Yeah. Fourteen, fourteen and a half. So it's pretty close all the way around. A pack basket is longer than it is wide. So at some point we're going to have to decide how deep we want our basket this way. So um, I'm going to have to split one. And the reason for it is I need an odd number. And even though I have if I had six here and seven going this way, six and six, and seven and seven, it's always going to be an even number. It doesn't matter what it is, so I have to I have to have an odd number in there somewhere. I'm only splitting one side. That's why you only need wider on this side, and I narrowed this side up. And for this to work, this piece I'm dividing, see how it's on top of this piece? It has to be under it. So the one that I'm splitting, I'm going to put this piece on here now and then I'm going to leave it to this side. This will be all I need on this side. So when I put this piece in, it puts this piece that I'm going to divide on the bottom where I want it. Just like that. And that's where I'm going to start. So these are all risers. Make the base, and then they all start to shoot skyward and create the walls of your basket. Correct. Now I'm going to take and dunk this again. Big bit. Soak it just like that, just for a few minutes. Let everything get wet again before we force it to bend. Hmm. Just makes sense to start on one that's split. Makes sense. Right. So, what I'd like not to do is to run this weaver through all these risers. So I'm going to hold my middle finger on that weaver there so it can't jump up. Because that's exactly what it wants to do. That weaver wants to come up. I'm going to bring this in. piece a little bit. Bend it so I get a really nice bend to it. Now I'm at a corner now where I want to keep the outside on the outside. It's really easy to turn this corner and make it look like this. When this comes up it's going to look right. Everything's been scraped really nice. Everything slides really nice. Hold my finger on it. Okay. 
everything is really at this point very deliberate you can't take anything for granted on this first couple of turns everything is so tight all right because it seems like it's tight until i stand them up and when i stand them up things don't look as pretty as they do So, at this point, I usually turn the basket over. I like to sit here in the basket between my legs so that I can come down and keep these pieces trained most of the time I Every time I come to a corner like this, I'm going to stand these pieces up like I'm going to see them when I'm done with it. I'll stand these pieces up and I'll look at that slack. So I know that that's what I need. These pieces may not stay here when I let them go, they're not going to stay there. But I know that I've got the right slack because I had those pieces where I wanted them. This first weaver that I'm putting on, it's not staying down anywhere. Don't let it bother you, because there's nothing that's going to hold them down. Until you get the two or three weavers on, the stuff's going to be real flighty. You probably noticed it the first time. Like, stuff looks like it's not coming together until you get up there a certain ways, and it's like stupid easy. We haven't got there. I'm at a point now where I'm going to need another weaver. I'd rather cut it here than go through here and add on here and only have that little tab in between here. If I cut it here and add on, I can go this, I can cover a lot more ground with my tail. Same, I try not to end it on a corner. Okay. Um, sometimes I do, if I haven't, you know, I, I try not to do it all the time. I try not to if I don't have to. So we're gonna use this. And you're always gonna cut it on the far edge of the last riser you go over, right here. Now we're going to put this back in the water and let it soak and see what we got for our next week. Every time I'll, I turn the corner like this, I always start by looking at my pieces and even them all up like this. And once you turn the corner, always try to pay attention to these coming up straight because that's, that's all the slack you've got right there. You can't bring this weaver down any further because you've pinched it right here. Um, you can fix that um, if you tucked it right up in close and from now on, when you weave it, let me let me show you. Let me let me come up through here. So I'm gonna turn this corner. Just like that. Okay, so. I do the next one now. The distance is some of it too. You've got a, you've got these pretty tight. No, it's not going to work. This is a really good example of having two heavier weaver. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's a little thick. It's a little thick. If it had been thinner here, it wouldn't have crimped this. Way. Silence.